Okay, we're here to talk about gas centrifuges. We want to talk about some technical aspects of the gas centrifuge and what a gas centrifuge is and how it operates. And uh, this is a lecture will cover a number of things. So here's a picture, a schematic of a gas centrifuge and a gas centrifuge cascade. The picture on the left uh, shows you how a centrifuge operates. You see at the, the uh, white arrows at the top show a feed material coming in. That feed is going to be uranium hexafluoride. And uranium hexafluoride, uh, if you're feeding natural uranium, for example, it would have 7 tenths of 1 percent uranium-235. And it comes in uh, and goes down the post in the center of this rotor. And it comes out uh, of the feet of the post and goes into the area. The, the gas centrifuge is a hollow cylinder that's rotating at a very rapid speed. Inside of the casing, you see the casing there. The casing is there to hold a vacuum and also to protect people uh, if the gas centrifuge were to break, and uh, since it's spinning at high speeds. And the centrifuge uh, has a feed line, a tails line, and a product line. So the tails is the depleted uranium, sometimes it's referred to as the waste, but the tails or the waste is depleted in uranium-235, and the product is enriched in uranium-235. So you see the different pictures there for the uh, enriched uranium is green, and the depleted uranium is whatever color that is. <laughs> So I'm a little colorblind, so I can't tell you exactly what color that is. Anyway, you see that the, uh, the, the gas in the centrifuge is rotating on, in a uh, clockwise direction on the right-hand side. By symmetry, it's counterclockwise on the other side. But it's going down along the wall and going up closer to the uh, post or the rotational axis. And as it's going down, it's collecting more and more of the heavy isotope because the uranium isotopes have been separated in the radial direction by the centrifugal force. So the uranium-238 is uh, predominant at the wall and uranium-235 near the axis. And so that countercurrent flow compounds that small separation and makes a larger separation between the top and the bottom of the centrifuge. We see in the picture here uh, the bottom scoop which is stationary. That's just a pipe sitting there to extract gas. The scoop up at the top is shielded by a baffle, and the baffle is connected to the rotor, so it's rotating with the rotor. But there are holes in the baffle so that the gas from the separation chamber goes into the baffle chamber at the top. Now, if that baffle were not there, the top scoop would cause the uh, gas to be circulating and just in an opposite way of the bottom scoop and you would just have mixing. You would not get any separation of the isotopes. So you have to have one of your scoops, at least one of the scoops, has to be shielded by a baffle. And the bottom scoop tends to uh, help that gas circulate in the direction it's circulating because when the gas, uh, which is rotating with the cylinder, impinges the stationary scoop, the gas loses its angular momentum, and so it falls, if you will, or moves towards the axis, and then as it, re as it gets away from the scoop, it, it regains its uh, rotational speed. And at the top, <clears throat> you'd have exactly the opposite action of that to, to cause mixing if you didn't have the baffle. So there's a, there's a motor down at the bottom that's spinning things, and there's a bottom bearing, which is usually a needle bearing, and at the top uh, there's a uh, magnet that's uh, bearing, has a, a magnet that is lifting some of the weight of the rotor off of the bottom bearing. Now this centrifuge will not separate uh, as much material as you want, or it will not separate, it will not achieve the desired <coughs> enrichment. So we have to connect a lot of centrifuges together. The picture on the right shows a schematic of a cascade of centrifuges. And the, the centrifuges, each row of centrifuges in that picture, each little, uh, each of these little things here is considered a centrifuge. And you see they're numbered on the right-hand side. So those are the stage numbers. Each row of centrifuges is called a stage. The widest stage is where you bring in the feed. And so the feed material goes into that one 
it goes from that centrifuge up to the next one, uh, uh, from that stage up to the next stage, and so forth and so on. The top stage here has only one centrifuge. And there are, all the stages above number five, above the feed stage, are called uh, enriching, that's the enriching section of the cascade, and below the feed stage is called the stripping section of the cascade. Now, some nomenclature. Uh, y sub P is the product concentration of the key isotope, which is in uranium, that's going to be uranium-235. X sub W is the waste or tails concentration of the key isotope. L sub N is the flow rate at stage N. So that's just the mass flow rate at stage N. So in this picture, we see at the very top, there's a product coming out, and that's called, that's at uh, some flow rate, a P, and at some uh, concentration, Y sub P. You see the feed stage down near the bottom. Here's the feed stage, so you have some feed coming in, so many moles per second, and at a feed concentration. And material from this feed stage goes up the cascade and is fed into the next stage. Material from that stage comes down the cascade and it goes back into the stage below it. So we have, for any stage, we have that, uh, here's stage N, and we go up to stage N plus one, and stage N plus one brings material back down to stage N. And so you, everywhere the stages come together, you work to make it so that the concentrations are the same, so that you don't get any mixing. And so at the bottom, of the, uh, you have a W, that's the flow rate of the tails. So F is the flow rate of the feed. And you have a material balance on this cascade. You know that uh, F has got to be equal to P plus W. So the, the, whatever you put in there has to come out. So F is equal to P plus W. Also, the F multiplied times the concentration X sub F, you have a material balance on the isotope also. So F times X sub F is going to be equal to P plus P times YP plus W times XW. So you can calculate the, the amount of material in each of those streams, and they have to balance. So you have an overall material balance, and you have an isotopic material balance. So we measure the separation factor for the cascade or for the centrifuge, a particular centrifuge, either, either way, uh, is y sub p over 1 minus y sub p divided by xw over 1 minus xw. That's the overall separation factor. Each centrifuge has a feed stream and a product coming out and tails coming out. So you can calculate the separation factor for each centrifuge. And you can also calculate the separation factor for the overall cascade. And then there's a function shown here that's called a value function. Uh, the value function, I'll uh, just say, read it, it's V of X, and that's 2X minus 1 the net times the natural logarithm of X over 1 minus X. So X would be a concentration. So X is the number between 0 and 1. Concentrations are never greater than 1 or less than 0, so it's, X is the number between 0 and 1. And so that, me, that value function is intended to measure the value of the material. It uh, was in discovered, uh, derived, maybe a better word, by, I think the first time it was by P.A.M. Dirac during the Manhattan Project, or maybe even slightly before the Manhattan Project. But that's the value function. Now with that function, what we, I told you we have a material balance, F is equal to P plus W, we have an isotopic balance, F times XW, is uh, XF, F, F times XF is equal to P times YP plus W times XW. You, have, you balance the number, uh, material balance of the isotopes and of the uh, overall material. You also have a value balance. So the value balance is whatever you put in has some value, and whatever comes out has some value. So we write that mathematically as, uh, uh, as an equation using the value function. And this is the separative work that is done. So you see that it's the product rate times the value of the product, V of Y sub P, plus W, the tails rate times V of XW, 
minus the value of what you put in. And what you put in was the feed rate times the value, uh, that function of that concentration, XF. So the overall value balance tells you how much separative work that you have done. So it's a very important concept in, uh, in, in enrichment. And the, uh, if, all of those, you know, if what you take out is the same as what you put in, then you've done zero separative work. So you're trying to achieve a certain amount of separate work. So P is the product flow rate at concentration. Y sub P, W is the waste flow rate, sometimes called the tails flow at XW. F is the feed rate at concentration, XF. So here's an example. <clears throat> so if you have an enrichment step and you feed in 7 tenths natural uranium, uh, and this has a Picture there, in the picture, you've got 5.479 kilograms of uranium. Out the top, you're taking out one kilogram, enriched to 3% of uranium-235. The tails are at two-tenths percent uh, uranium-235. And in that enrichment, 4.306 separate work units were achieved. You can do that, by your, you can do your calculations uh, after this lecture, you could do that online <laughs> on your calculator and use the uh, formula I had before and calculate uh, 4.306 separate work units in, as shown in this example. And you see that there, there's an overall material balance and an overall isotopic balance. So that's something, uh, an example that could be checked out. <clears throat> so the enrichment, as I was talking about, the enrichment of uranium is measured by separative work units and SWU per year, kilograms of uranium per year. Del U is the separative capacity of a separating element. For example, a centrifuge has a separative capacity or the cascade has a separative capacity. So you can look at the individual unit or the total cascade. Now if I have a typical power reactor and I want to run that power reactor for about a year, then I need to enrich uranium to the level required for my reactor design. It may be, say, 4%. But it's going to require approximately 125,000 separate work units per year. So I have to have that much capacity to keep providing fuel for my reactor. And so this is uh, for Easy way to think about it, if I have uh, a single centrifuge has 10, can separate the separate capacity of 10 separate work units per year, then the cascade is going to require 12,500 uh, centrifuges to get 125,000. So there's a little bit of loss of efficiencies in your cascade, but it's very, all cascades are very, very high, made as efficient as possible. So that's a very good rule of thumb there. You just multiply the separate capacity of each centrifuge by the number of centrifuges uh, to see what the cascade is going to do. Now, that was talking about power reactors, but if you want to make highly enriched uranium, which is called HEU, uh, by definition, anything that's over 20% uranium-235 is HEU. Anything less than 20% is LEU, low enriched uranium. But if you want to make uh, a nuclear weapon, then you have to have highly enriched uranium in the neighborhood of 90% uranium-235 or greater. And here, if you want to, in this example, in the first bullet on the slide, to produce 25 kilograms of uranium enriched from natural uranium to 93% requires 5,000 separate work units. One, uh, 25 kilograms of enriched uranium is called a significant quantity, that's SQ here. And SQ is a measure of, uh, defined by the International Atomic Energy Agency as the amount of material needed to make one nuclear weapon. Uh, to produce 25 kilograms uranium rich from three and a half to 93 requires 1,400 swoos. So 72% of the work is done in making the three and a half percent from natural uranium. So as you go up the cascade, 
as you go, you're doing more work in the feed area than you're doing at the t in a higher part of the cascade. So it's a nonlinear process of uh, enrichment and the function defining the value function is a natural logarithm and so it's clearly a, a nonlinear process. So anyway, one SQ is 5,000 separate work units going from natural uranium. So consider a hypothetical centrifuge that has 10 separate work units per year. I have a centrifuge in my laboratory that will make 10 swoop per year. To make one SQ 93%, I've got to have 5,000 separate work units, as I just said on the previous slide. And so at 10 swoops per centrifuge, I need 500 centrifuges in my cascade. If I want to make one SQ, if I've already got my material enriched to 3.5%, and I use that material in my to feed my cascade, I'm only going to require 140 centrifuges to go from 35 to 93. 